living like a prince Made the hammer go crushing my heart to pieces Never hold it, just leave it Resurrect and believe it, just receive it He could do a better job than you can make it You can fake it, flip, twist and mold it But you're still holding it And if I knew I didn't have to force my future Baby, I would've been sleeping in Hey, I did my best and God did the rest Believe I did my best and God did the rest Receive I said we did our best and God did the rest It's not me Hey guys, Vivi here, and we are in week two of Family Matters. So last week, Justin said a lot of really good stuff. I loved it. It was all about just so much of what we gain when we do say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord, that we gain a whole family in that. My life has changed because of that. But today, I, I kind of want to hit pause on that, and I kind of just want to take it down a second and really just ask you, when you think about your family, what comes to mind? I don't want you to leave this moment. I actually want you to just take a second to maybe slow down. Um, for some of you, it might be a lot of happy thoughts. You know, the holidays are, we're in holiday season and a lot of you have a lot to look forward to. And some of you probably try to avoid this and, and try to avoid never letting your mind or your heart go there. Um, but today I wanna just ask you if you would just let me in a little bit today because I believe that God has something so good for you and me today. Because the beauty of this series is that we get to learn what we gain when we join the, the Christian faith, when we join just what even that means. Um, and I'm here to tell you that all that stuff that maybe feels so foreign, it changed my life. This series, it hits so close to home because for me, when I was growing up, my family was a lot of things that they shouldn't have been. But what it taught me is that there's a God that shouldn't have been anything to me that was so much to me. And in what my family wasn't, I got to experience who Jesus actually was. And so I'm excited today specifically just for what I've got to talk about because I think if you're anything like me, um, a series that started off like last week where there's a lot of good and a lot of hope in what family could look like for you by believing in Jesus, like while there is that, it still leaves a lot of us in this tension of great, you know, I, I believe that I've got this eternal family but what does that do for my earthly family, the one that I'm stuck with, the one that I didn't choose, the one that I'm just here with? Because that is actually the source of all of my pain. That's actually the source of where I don't have any hope. That's actually the source of where I feel like my life is going nowhere and I'm stuck in it. So what does that actually do for me when I still have to live with that on this side of eternity? And a lot of you there, you might share that same wrestle with me and might get passionate just like I did. But I wanna just let you know, even now, like I'm not speaking from old passions or old pain, I'm talking even now. Even now there are things and lies and insecurities that I still feel, that I still battle because of things that have gone on in my earthly family. You know, one of the things that um, just gets me is that sometimes there is this lie because I, I repeat some of the things that my parents said to me or that you know family wasn't for me, that there is this lie of, okay, I didn't grow up in this family that goes to church or this big church family and now here I am going to church, so, so who do I have? Who's in my life? Um, I, I, I always replay this question of who's got my back? And honestly, even working at a church now, there's a lot of times where I feel like I don't think I actually belong here. I think they should pick someone else. I'm just sharing with you guys a lot of real insecurities that I have from this real tension of, there's so much good in eternal family, but what does that mean with what I've been left with my earthly family? I mean, even when we're in the holiday season, like I said, a lot of you guys, it might not be something you look forward to. Even now, I still get nervous. Every, every, I still get nervous. <laughs> There's still a lot of feels. And I even think some of what I'm feeling right now, which caught me off guard, obviously, um, I think it's the first time I've cried uh, speaking with Sandals Youth, except for if you were at camp, is because it, sometimes it's your earthly family, but sometimes you even gain a part of your church family, and sometimes things change there too. But I want you to know that maybe this is you who shares similar things like myself. I 
And maybe this might be a friend around you who needs to hear a message like this. But I want to just affirm you that this tension of, I want to believe this, but I'm stuck in this, it's a real tension. And it is a real tension where there's real emotion, even now. Um, But I, I want you to hear this, if that's you or if you're thinking of that friend, that God is not leaving you or your friend out to dry until eternity when you get to step into that family. There is hope on this side of eternity. There is life on this side of eternity, even with the family that you're with. And so today, whew, we just jumped into getting real. I collected myself. That's what I love about this church. Um, today, we are going to talk about how do we then stay hopeful being a part of an eternal family when your earthly family is just tough. We're going to just dive right on in. And I, I want to just say this too, that the truth is for a lot of us, a lot of the things that might cause you pain similar to myself, a lot of those things are just things that are out of your control. You know, I, 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 I think part of why I get so emotional even now as a 28-year-old is because I'm like, what I get emotional about are hurts and wounds that I had when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was your age. And it sucks that it's, it's still, it still makes you emotional, but that's real. And there's a God that is real and wants to meet you in that. And today we're going to just hear about how real that is, not just through my life, but through the life of Joseph. One of the reasons why I love the Bible is because it makes me not feel crazy. There are other people that have just baggage, like your girl, um, who have had stories that feel impossible to come out of. And God shows them so much more. And I do believe that God wants to show you so much more or show you something to share with a friend so much more through the life of Joseph today. So we're just gonna start off with Genesis chapter 37, verse three. And I'm only gonna read two verses just to start because I've read this story so many times, but it was in these first two verses that I'm like, oh, that pretty much explains Joseph's life. So verse three, it says this. If you don't know anything about Joseph, we hear a lot of things that he's, he's, uh can interpret dreams. And you're gonna hear a lot about of his baggage in a second, but we hear a lot of the good things that he ends up um, being over all of Egypt, okay? But a little bit of how he got there is that he had this dad, Jacob. And so in verse three, it picks up and it says, Jacob, who is his dad, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children. Jacob had a ton of sons. Um, But he loved Joseph, who we're talking about today, more than any other of his children, because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. Verse four, this is where, just a little contrast, but his brothers hated Joseph. So you got Jacob who loves Joseph, who it's, it's his favorite son. And then you get his brothers who hate Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. And they couldn't say any kind word to him. That's what the Bible says. And there's a lot of you that probably have a little bit of family dynamics like that, where maybe you're tight with your parents, your siblings hate you because of that. Or maybe you're tight with your siblings and your parents this, or maybe you're not tight with anybody, but there's this drama and baggage. But what I want to show you is that this pattern of there's favor and then there's pain, that is the story of Joseph's life. Even though he loves God, that's the story of his life. You see, because his brothers didn't just stop at hating him and not having a kind word to say to him. They actually decided to kill him. They wanted to kill him. And they ended up not killing him, not because they had grace or mercy or compassion, but because they were like, if we kill him, what do we gain? So they end up selling him into slavery and he ends up a slave, but he ends up a slave for the captain of the guard of the king, basically a big high up there dog. um, And he was a slave for this master. And things end up actually going well for him. He ends up doing really well. And this master ends up really taking him in and putting him in charge of a lot of his things. And so it doesn't stop there because that's not his pattern. It doesn't stop at favor. You get to pain because what happens is things are going great. This guy's got to come up, started from the bottom. Now he's a slave, but now he's the master of all the things there, okay? And the master's wife starts to come on to him, wants to sleep with him. Like if you want drama and are into that, read the Bible, okay? So the master's wife wants to sleep with him. He ends up saying no. She ends up accusing him and he ends up getting thrown into prison. So he's a slave, his brothers hates him, gets sold, works his way up, and now he's back down in prison. But the story of Joseph doesn't stop there because 
He actually ends up making the most of being in prison and gets put in charge of all of the prisoners. So the warden there, the prisoner person, the prisoner person, the guy in charge found favor on Joseph and said, there's something about him. He's going to be in charge of everybody. So now Joseph's in charge of everybody. He ends up interpreting dreams for even more people in prison, finds his way into Pharaoh. Okay, so that's like the king of all of Egypt, basically. Finds his way to Pharaoh, interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, ends up getting out of prison, going into Egypt. And then because he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams, Pharaoh's like, this guy is who we want. He needs to actually fulfill the thing that he just interpreted. And we're going to put him in charge of all of Egypt. So this is Joseph's life. It's this pattern of pain, but favor. And I just want to go back to why we're talking about family matters is because all of these things that happen in Joseph's life, they started because the family he was dealt with. It was his family that threw him into that. And I think so often we rush to the good things, but we forget about the rugged path that happens on the way there. And so today I want to just make a few observations just off of that. Um, And it's this, that sometimes the idea of earthly love, God's love, similar to what we talked about last week, being adopted into this, sometimes eternal love doesn't line up. The eternal love that we talked about last week, sometimes that doesn't line up with the earthly love. And it is tough. It's tough when you want to believe this, but you got to live in this. It's tough. But just because it doesn't line up, SCY, I want you to hear this. It doesn't have to outweigh. Just because the earthly things don't always line up with the eternal things, it doesn't have to outweigh. You know, even though most of our family wounds are out of our control, a lot of things that I got emotional about earlier are out of my control. I can think about the things that my parents would say to me. I can think about the times my mom would just change the locks to our house to lock my dad out. And then I'd be like in trouble for not letting my dad in. I was a kid at the time. I like, I I think about those things. Those weren't things that were in my control. I think about being told that our family is the way that it is because of me. I think about being told I'm on a waste of an investment. Those are things that are out of our control. And a lot of you have so many different stories like that, but just because things are out of our control doesn't mean they have to define us. Doesn't mean they have to even set you back. Doesn't mean they have to mess you up. I know that was a fear of mine growing up, is this is what I'm growing up in? Does this mean I'm going to be messed up for life? It still is something that I carry with me. And I love the story of Joseph because we don't see Joseph's story end the moment that he gets sold into slavery. That saga that I told you, that was only possible because the story didn't end at the first thing that didn't go his way. And yet none of the things a part of his story were in his control at all. So the big thing that I want you to hear, that I want you to write down, if you've got a family with baggage and drama, if you know a friend who this is their story, you need to write this down. And maybe it's not you yet, but write this down for your future self. And it's this, that when we choose to believe that God is in control, it changes our view of what is out of control. When we choose to believe that God is in control, I am telling you, it will change your view of the things that are out of your control. This is the story of Joseph. I I could go back and reread every single scripture. We're in Genesis chapter 37 all the way to Genesis chapter 45. But I just want to highlight a few things. And it's the few times, the beginning of every time his life started sucking and then it got good. Because you find these little snippets in scripture and anytime you can find patterns in the Bible where it repeats things, underline it, bold it, highlight it, whatever you gotta do, remember it. Because I guarantee God wants to do the same thing in your life too. And so in Genesis chapter 39, verse two, this is the very beginning when he gets sold into slavery and he becomes the uh, slave of the master. And it starts with this, that the Lord was with Joseph. And not even just that, that Potiphar, his master, I'm talking like the OG scene of suffering, um, Potiphar noticed this and he realized that the Lord was with Joseph. I want to point out that we get to see that the Lord was with Joseph all throughout his life. There are so many verses that say the Lord was with him. And in this particular scene, we see that the Lord was with Joseph in how he lived, in his actions. It wasn't just something that existed to Joseph in and of himself. 
like God being with Joseph was something that existed outside of himself to the point where Potiphar could say, there's something different about him. The Lord is with him. This is my slave, but there's something about his life that makes me curious. I just wonder if the ruin that you're in, if maybe there's someone around you that's just watching you, watching the way that you're responding to just some of the worst things in your life or maybe what family is. And they're looking at you and they're saying, man, there's, there's something different about that person. People around you will notice, but we don't just see it in his actions. We actually see Joseph, um, even in his endurance, we see that the Lord was with him because this man like endured slavery into being accused, into being thrown into prison and, and all the while dealing with the trauma that your brothers wanted to kill you and instead they decided to sell you because they'd make more coin off that. Like that's actual trauma. And, and, and we don't ever read about all the different things, but can you imagine the heartache that Joseph just carried with him over and over and over again? And yet we see that the Lord is with him because he doesn't give up. We see that the Lord is with him because he doesn't just throw the towel in. There have been many times, many times in my life where I've just wanted to say, this is too much. This is way more than I can handle. And truth is, it was. But those were the moments that I got to experience, not Vivi be strong, but I got to experience the power of God be strong in me. And those moments can only happen when you can't and this is too much and when it is too much for you. And we're gonna talk about a verse that says that in a bit. Um, But we see it in his endurance. We see that even though Potiphar was furious with him, threw him in prison, we see that the Lord was with Joseph in prison and showed his faithful love for him. And we don't just see it just in his actions, in his endurance, but we even see this in how Joseph thinks about his life, the narrative of his life. Because for a lot of you, you know, your story is probably similar to mine, where there is just a lot of brokenness in family that might stick with you till you're 28 like me uh, and working through it. Um, But how you talk about those things, it matters and it does things to your heart. It does things to your mind. There's a big time in my life where all I could say is I hate my dad. I'll respect him as a provider, but not as a father. He puts a roof over my head, but he's got nothing to do with my life and my heart. And I felt righteous in that. Like I I felt early high school, I was like, it makes logical sense. Nobody would even argue with me on that till I read the Bible about a life that God wants for me, that it actually has more than living based off the way I decide my life is, that what makes sense to me, I actually have to surrender that to what makes sense to God. And, And when you start living your life in that way, when you start speaking a narrative over your life, start thinking about it in the way, not maybe that it feels, not that you think it is, but the way that God says it can be, you will actually start experiencing a freedom and change in that. I've seen it happen in my life because it is so easy to let our past and our pain define us without ever realizing it. And it's in how we talk about the things. If you talk about those things, like you're still in it, or when people are like, hey, how's your family? And you're like, oh, my family sucks. I am telling you, your heart is suffering because of the way you talk about your family. We see Joseph at the very end of his story the very end, his brothers end up coming back to him. Read the story. It's incredible. His brothers end up coming back from him. And if you were like me, you'd be like, I don't want anything to do with you. Quit acting brand new. Like, you know what you did to me. Admit what you did to me. Like, that's what I would do. Joseph didn't do that. It for sure took Joseph a second to get there because he's human. But God still is working in him. In Genesis chapter 45, we see Joseph tell his brothers, don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves. Have you ever thought about telling your family or your siblings or your parents that? That is how you know there is God in him, that the Lord is with him. He says, don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me. And you keep reading. God, in verse seven, God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive to preserve many survivors. Verse eight, so it was God who sent me. And he is the one who made me the advisor. He's saying that all of this journey of pain, it wasn't you siblings who did this to me. It was God actually who did that. It was God that allowed those things to happen to me so he could position me for what I was always meant to be positioned for. 
I wonder how many of you need to start speaking a different narrative over the brokenness you've experienced in your family. What if God is just positioning you? And I know it hurts. He knows it hurts. But what if God is just positioning you for what you were always created to be? You see, because the best thing that we get when we choose to believe that God is in control is we get to see that, uh, sorry, we get to see, we get to see that purpose is possible in your pain. That a lot of you might just be in the thick of it and think there's no way out, but we get to see if we live a life like Joseph where God is in it, where we choose to believe that he is in control, we get to see that there is actually purpose in your pain, that it's possible. That's what Joseph's life tells us. The other thing that we get to see is that healing is possible in your heartache. I, I know I got emotional, but those are actually good tears, I, I'm telling you. And it's just in this realization that I am here standing, talking to a bunch of teenagers. And I remember being that teenager I remember being that teenager and thinking, I just need to graduate and get away. But I remember being that teenager that I just thought I need to graduate and get away. And God had something so different. God said, Vivi, I know this is hurtful. I know you are in this, but your story is not over. I am in control of everything that feels so out of control. And now I'm here getting to speak with a bunch of you teenagers who share stories similar to mine about a God that actually can heal every aspect of your heartache. He actually can provide you with a family that you'll be able to experience a grace that maybe your earthly family was never able to give you and probably because they're human and broken too. And you will be able to experience that there is purpose on the other side of your pain. I know for a fact there are many of you that God is saying the story is just getting started. I am not done yet. And so I wanna leave you with this. Romans 8, 28 says that, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. I want to end with that because I, I want that to be a prayer for you as you leave tonight or today or whenever you're watching this that your story is not over because your earthly family might be one thing, but God's not holding you out to dry until you get to that eternal side. He's in it now. And when we start to believe that God is actually in control of everything around that feels so out of your control, you will see that there is pain possible. <laughs> you will see that there is purpose possible in your pain. And you will see that there is healing possible in your heartache. Man, S-E-Y, I love you, but I love you not nearly as much as the God who is in control of your life and loves you.